Welcome to the SDR Disco Call Podcast, a podcast designed for brand new sales development reps in the world of software as a service. Every Tuesday, we're going to be bringing you a new guest who's still in the role to share how or why they've gone into sales development, what have they learned in their SDR career and journey to date, and what three pieces of information would they like to share back to new and existing reps to help them become happy sellers. Every show is transcribed, recorded with links from the guests, which are available at happyselling.io forward slash podcast. I'm going to be your host, Neil Buyan, and I look forward to taking you into the world of sales development through the SDR Disco Call podcast. So with that in mind, let's begin. So hello, listeners and watchers. Welcome to another episode of the SDR Disco Call podcast. Today, I'm a little bit excited and feeling a little bit nostalgic because we've got a great guest. Uh, We've got somebody that I used to work with and I've coached in the past. And I've seen this gentleman grow uh, in his career in the last year or so. And I'm super excited to have you. Victor Embrex, welcome to the SDR Disco Call podcast. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing really good. Uh, I, I have to be honest, I was looking forward to this for a couple of weeks um, and I woke up with a smile today. So thanks for having me. It's an honor. Boom. Thank you. So it's an honor to, and privilege to have you, Victor, and thank you for being a guest on today's show. So for the listeners and for the watchers out there, Victor, could you kind of tell us like, who are you? Like, where are you based in the world? What do you do for, for work? And uh, a little bit of the company that you're working with today. Yeah, of course. Um, So my name is Victor. I'm based in Belgium, mostly in Ghent. Um, That's where I've uh, found the most startups to uh, work in. Um, I'm currently working at TechWolf. Uh, They do uh, AI-based strategic workforce planning, really complicated stuff, just um, (laughs) getting the the right people uh, with the right skills on the right jobs at the right time. So um, in my free time, I love to be active. I do all kinds of sports. I uh, picked up uh, padelling it's called in Belgium uh, as a, a kind of lockdown sport um, and uh, I also love to connect with people um, just network seeing new faces uh, uh, virtually virtually more nowadays but uh, yeah those are the oh. things I enjoy thank you so much that's a great introduction so Victor from Belgium currently working at Tech Wolf and uh, obviously like there was life before TechWalk and for like transparency for the listeners and watchers. Uh, we worked in a former company, which obviously we'll go into in a little bit. But like, Victor, before we kind of like dive into the journey, like for you, what do you kind of see as what is sales development for you? And kind of like, why are you passionate about sales development, Victor? Um, I think one of the greatest aspects of sales development is that you're the first person uh, a possible client gets into contact with. Um, And it's a really honorable job because I always uh, compare it with like an army or whatever. They are the frontline runners um, who like spot the enemy or the uh, friends at first sight um, and and, yeah, the the first line of defense. And uh, in in my opinion, um, if those people aren't equipped with the right tools, your whole strategy uh, caves in. So it's a really important part of the organizations, especially in startups, uh, I've noticed. 100%. And I know that you're a big sales development fan and the art of sales itself. You're somebody that reads a hell of a lot. You watch a lot of content. You consume like a machine. I remember that from back in the day. And you'd always be bringing me like cool ideas of stuff that you've read online. So I'd always love that. So like, if um, we can kind of show the watchers that are kind of watching this show, so again, like looking at your LinkedIn profile, I uh, love the picture, by the way, and I love the branding on TechWolf. Um, if we kind of like go back a few years, like what we could see is obviously you've worked like as an event manager for a business. You've worked as a BD at CoVibes. You were a project coordinator at Level 2 Work. We met at Intuo, and we'll go into that story later on, and they obviously were mm-hmm. acquired. Uh, and then you've kind of come to TechWolf. So Victor, for the watchers and listeners out there, like how did you get into sales and kind of what was your work history before jumping into that SDR role? Yeah, so I've always had like two big passions and the one being talent in all the ways you can imagine and the other being startups. Um, so uh, my first first um, like kind of uh, 
uh, job was actually um, at a talent incubator. So there we went, uh, we worked with uh, young individuals who, who really wanted to figure out what their passion in life was and what they uh, got energy from doing um we used uh, we we frequently used the framework ikigai i don't know if you know it but um it's it's a really cool um way that i got into uh talent and talent incubating um but then um i just loved the atmosphere because it was a startup and and all of uh, all of us were like like-minded people who wanted to grow really fast and that's something i get a lot of energy from um so I was looking into ways in joining a startup and because I didn't have a university or a college degree or whatever, um, I found uh, the best way to get into a startup is uh, being an SDR because sales was never something I looked into as a career path up until then. Um, and, and my mentor at the time actually told me like, this could be something f for you, just talking to people with your kind of energy, this will uh, certainly work out. So that's why I started applying for SDR jobs. Um, and that's kind of how I landed uh, 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 at Intuo eventually. Love it. And um, so obviously like working for that start startup vibe and culture, that's something you're looking for. Like, again, so, like your mentor said, to match your passion and energy. <laughs> and uh, you, you raise an interesting point there, like the Igachai uh, kind of methodology. Um, that's something I'm a big fan of. And it's something that was introduced to me only last year. And it kind of helped me relaunch Happy Selling like when we was going through that situation with the C word, which I'm not going to mention. But for the listeners out there, what is the Igachai like framework? Could you help simplify it for somebody that doesn't know what it is? Yes, very much so. Um, it is a theoretical framework and it's always, um, uh, I think, the exercise to put the theory into practice. But basically what it means, um, you have... Uh, different kind of questions you can ask yourself and, and zones where you operate in. So the first one could be, what do you actually get energy out from when you're doing it? So that you're not spending energy, but feeling more energized by doing these things. Um, so that's the first question. Then a second question could be, what does the world actually need? Uh, because that's also important to take into account. And the third aspect is, what can I actually get paid for? Because we live in a world where you have to have some kind of way to uh, of money um, because, yeah, uh, that's just the case. And with those three um, like fields figured out, you can hit a, a sweet spot where you can combine those three things in, um, yeah, your like passion or dream job or uh, whatever. And uh, ikigai is not that um, you should immediately achieve like the ideal state but you should constantly reflect on okay how am I going moving more towards the center am I now doing more stuff that I don't get energy from or is this more useful and impactful on the world or whatever um, but uh, constantly yeah moving towards the center I would say absolutely love that and um, so for me, with the Ikakai Circle, um, it was introducing me because I was, I was going through a point in my life when obviously the pandemic hit, um, work wasn't really happening. And I kind of had to ask myself those questions of like, what do I want to do? And I felt a little bit lost. Uh, and my mentor uh, kind of came up to me and said, Neil, I'm going to introduce you to this concept. And uh, it's not something that's going to help you overnight. It's something you're going to have to sit on for quite a long period of time. Uh, and figure out. And the way he simplified it to me was like, think of like four columns. Like what well, you said, okay, what is it that you love? What is it that you're passionate about? What kind of brings you energy? What things can you do? Um, you know, that doesn't really ignite you as much. And what are the things that you really hate doing? And that's mm. how he kind of like simplified it for me. Uh, and just for the watchers out there, so guys, if you're uh, able to watch this uh, through uh, our channel, uh, I'm just going to bring up on the screen that circle so this is uh, kind of like what we're talking about and i think like passion is sales development right uh, profession is kind of like being a trainer vocation is kind of like uh, knowing the best practices within sales development what do i love i love helping people uh, and i love seeing people grow somebody like yourself like when we were working mm -hmm. together i was so happy to see you progress and to kind of where you've got into uh, the mission is to make a bunch of well i want to make the world of uh, a bunch of happy sellers one smile at a time what does the world need 
they need a trainer that gives a damn and cares about the SDRs and it's just not, you know, just being another sort of role. Um, so I, I love the fact that you came across it. Um, and is this something that you still use today or like in any other aspects of your life, Victor? Yeah, for sure. It's something um, I reflect on from time to time. Um, I think it's really important um, because this is uh, more towards your like professional life. But uh, I think especially in this day and age, we're so busy with our professional lives um, mm. that, that you need to um, really get a grasp on where am I at? Where do I want to go? Um, and this framework, framework could really help with that. Love it, love it. Um, and another point which you mentioned uh, that we've both said is the word mentor. So I think with a lot of SDRs, they may be looking for mentors or they need some sort of guidance. And in the last few months, if anything, I've had some people say, Neil, can you be my mentor? And I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I've never been asked that before. But what does mentorship mean for you? And how did you find your mentor, Victor? Um, mentorship for me it has taken a couple of different roles because i've had different mentors um but it essentially means somebody who is maybe not that actively involved in your life so who doesn't have a, a part in it um, and, and and doesn't have a, a stake in it or whatever but um, who can give you a really fresh and outside per perspective on what you're doing, where you're going, um, and, and if you're actually progressing to where, towards where you want to go. So a person that preferably um, does get to know you a little bit, but um, is really, yeah, I would say from an outside view and dares to challenge you on what you actually uh, are doing. I think those are the most important aspects for me. The, lately, I've been working more with a coach uh, instead of a mentor to actually uh, have monthly or bi-monthly sessions on, um, yeah, uh, where am I at? Where do I want to go? Um, and, and, and diving deep into all aspects of my life, personal, uh, professional, um, uh, whatsoever. And that has really helped me because I, I think... Um, as you knew, you had a maybe more difficult period uh, in the beginning of the year. For me, that happened during the summer. Um, I had some stuff that I didn't, uh, I wasn't facing or whatever. Mm. So I started working more actively on, okay, how do I get a grip back on my life? Because I, I felt I was... Uh, living a life from uh, a point of view uh, above my head and I wasn't actively um, involved in it. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I can relate to that. So kind of like that feeling of being on autopilot where you mm -hmm. see stuff going around and perhaps there are things that we're not facing or kind of like taking by the horn. And it, it takes a lot of strength to kind of like, well, if, if anything, that's a, a level of self-awareness, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes we can go through all of these motions and we don't really know there's something not right within yeah. ourselves, but to recognize it is a good sign and then to act upon it. Um, and I'm happy to, to hear kind of like you, you've worked on it and you're kind of here, dude. So like proud mm -hmm. of you as well, man. And Excellent. looking for those coaches and looking for those mentors, mm -hmm. like how did you find them and how do you approach them to say like, hey, could you help me or kind of coach me? How, how did you do that? For me personally, it has uh, sometimes flowed more naturally. Um, it, uh, I first had some conversations with a person that interacted within my life for uh, a couple of weeks or months. And then, um, yeah, I just went up to him and uh, I, because I didn't make it too heavy. Like, do you want to be my mentor for uh, the rest of my life or whatever? Just saying, uh, I would love to talk to you about these and these topics. Uh, is that something that you would be interested in? Um, we can share some experiences uh, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I looked at uh, more uh, like that. And then afterwards, I uh, now see them more as like mentors, coaches in my life, uh, so to say. But it flowed quite naturally. And I also, uh, my biggest tip is like, don't make it too heavy. Maybe first ask to just uh, exchange some ideas on, on topics that, that like connect you both um, and then take it from there, uh, I would say. Absolutely love that. And um, I think it's, um, something really good for like SDRs when they're looking for those mentors or they're looking how I like mm. to put it like guides 
is obviously you can look internally in your own company to see if it's some if it's something that you want to aspire to, like a role, a position, a career path, etc. Then seek those people out internally. But I think it's also good to seek those people outside of your organization sure. as well. So I think when working as an SDL, I, I I know that I wanted to be like a salesperson. I know I wanted to like run my own business. Mm-hmm. And I think when I was working at Showpad, we had the privilege of working with like great VPs of sales and marketing. And if I was running a prospecting case with somebody trying to book them into a meeting and the meeting didn't pan out or, you know, they weren't interested in the solution, I'd say to the, the, the prospect said, hey, look, I know, OK, we're not going to talk about Showpad, but I really respect like what you've done in the industry and I really want to learn from it. Can we park the sales conversation and can we just have a, a career discussion? Mm-hmm. And it would change the dynamic completely. Sure. And uh, I'll be honest with you, sometimes they did become the prospect and they did become the sale yeah. right down the line because they built that trust. But I think it's really cool and uh, to kind of have that. So I think when you're connecting with a lot of leaders that you might be as an SDR connected to, there's an opportunity to like seek it out within your prospects. I always think to myself, right, if I don't mm-hmm. get that meeting or I book that demo, what else could I gain from that? What, what are your thoughts on that, Victor? Uh, for sure. I've had it so many times and, um, especially now starting up in a new role, I actually, um, the first weeks when I just had like a first grasp of, of like the product and the space we were in, I immediately started, uh, like contacting, um, I would say industry leaders, um, for us, it's sometimes CHROs of like large organizations and just being really, um, vulnerable in your message like i guarantee you to you this is not a sales call mm-hmm. i'm just starting out in this role i just want to pick your brain and like l- let's learn from each other um and uh, you can be amazed about how many people are actually open to have those kind of conversations and to help you out um as a, uh, a starting uh, individual or a beginning entrepreneur or uh, a startup or whatever um it's really cool to see 100% 100% and i think it's just like you said, like when you're first starting out as an SDR, you want to connect with the people that one day eventually you're going to sell to and kind of approaching them and saying, look, this isn't a sales conversation. I'm a student and I'm looking to learn this craft even better. Can you kind of like give me some time? Like you said, to pick your brain. Um, And this is something that I've had done to myself and I've done it to other people. But I think what can make it even more impactful is when you approach those CHROs or thought Mm -hmm. leaders to say like, these are the three things that I'm looking to learn upon, such mm. as employee engagement or like how do you drive employee morale or how do you do performance management, etc. I would just love to hear what your sure. thoughts and your words on it are, because I think a lot of the time we may approach the mentor and say, I want to learn about sales or I want to learn this. But if you come concrete, then it shows that you're being particular about something as well. So definitely mm-hmm. for listeners and watchers out there, if you're going to approach those sort of prospects, come to them with some ideas of what you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, but also, so like if uh, we like you're in your current role at the moment at TechWolf, mm-hmm. um, but I'd love to kind of like go back in time a little bit to like when we met each other at Intuo. Mm-hmm. So this was in Belgium. It's a HR SaaS platform. Uh, and I remember I was like a coach slash manager at role at the time. And I come across this young, quiet Victor Embrex who was working a region. I think was it in you was working originally the Dutch region? Yes, very much and then so. You, yeah, and then you went on to, to Belgium uh, afterwards. But like, how, uh, what was it like for you, like when you kind of took on that SDRL at Intuo, like working in a region, moving, working with like a growing mm. startup, there was a lot of changes going on. Like, what was that experience like for you, Victor? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, um, I joined and I kind of felt like, them. Um, I had no experience like uh I, I didn't experience anything like that before and i uh the first week i felt like damn i bullshitted my way into the job and i have no clue what i'm doing <laughs> um, like all of these abbreviations and and terms people are using in tools and whatever and and um they also just like gave me a stack of like white papers to read like 20 of them about the hr space and i was reading them and after like page five i would totally like blank out like what did i read for the last five pages so um wasn't the best uh start for me um 
But what I did feel is like the energy and the people and, and they're so amazing and I want to become like this. So that like kept me driving um, to like, uh, yeah, keep figuring stuff out. But uh, indeed, I started uh, on the Netherlands market um, as an outbound SDR, just following exactly what they told me to do. So in the beginning, they told me just cold call 50 people a day, uh, send automated email blast, uh, and that will get you your target. And I like totally believed in that. Um, <laughs> but then uh, once I got on the phone, I was like two weeks fresh into the role and I got the first prospect on the phone and I was like, uh, uh, and I, 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 yeah, um, I had some uh, pretty big uh, fails in those first couple of weeks, um, mm. and then after six months, because it really wasn't working out for me, um, I actually did two weeks or three weeks of inbound SDRing. That also really, really wasn't for me, especially coming from the outbound side of it. But then um, uh, I essentially. Um, came up with a plan and said like this isn't working i feel i'm motivated i'm trying uh these things that you're telling me to do but um i have this interesting idea to go more on uh, an enterprise account-based selling method and i've read this and this and this there 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 um could we try it like this with like a real key account list and then uh, different people per account and uh going into like that and and that's where i just found my passion but i think the most important part was that i really believed in the strategy and I kind of created my own mini startup within the startup because mm. they just said like okay this is your method you get three months and after three months we want to see results um, so uh, that was kind of yeah but that, that was really exciting period in time because everything was up to me uh, so to say and the people I worked with uh, luckily and I did have some really experienced colleagues who helped me uh, along the way because uh, yeah um, setting out a strategy and actually executing it is like something completely different but, yeah. indeed in, indeed and I was so proud to kind of like witness that with yourself because I think like we said before this recording show, like I'm a big Marvel fan and I'm a fan of like the Avengers. And the analogy that I like to take for the listeners and watchers out there is kind of like the Captain America analogy. Because when I first met you, you was this young Steve Rogers. You were quite timid. You were quite quiet. I remember I used to walk into the intro office and I see Victor near that. You'd always be the first guy in the, uh, in the room and you'd be the last guy out of the office. That's the one thing I always noted about you and I loved. Um, but you were this timid quiet and like you was on these calls and like you'd like be hunching over. And I remember when I came on as a coach, I'd be sitting opposite you because I'd be like the second guy in the room. And mm. I'd be looking at you and I'd be with, with admiration. I was like, I love this guy. Like he comes in early and he's the first one dude and he's like trying to give it a call. But I could also see like the disdain in your face, like the rejections trying to connect through. I remember one day I was just like, I was at my laptop and I looked up in front of you and I was like, Victor, like sit up just a little bit more because if you're hunched over <laughs> when you're in a call, then you're going to be all compressed and it's going to come out in your tone, in your voice. And you sat up and I just remember seeing like you were feeling just like a little bit more confident. Mm -hmm. And then I remember like when we was having our one-to-ones, um, like, yeah, we were discussing the numbers. They weren't great. We was like a bit worried about the performance. And I said, this guy's got something, but it's just not clicking for him yet. And I remember like we, uh, we did a session around account-based sales development mm -hmm. and enterprise accounts, et cetera. And I remember after the session, uh, when we had our one-to-one, -one, you kind of came with this, game, like something, a spark went off in you and mm -hmm. something clicked and you were like, Ooh, outbound enterprise account-based sales development. Uh, and to your point correctly, you came with a game plan. And I remember as we sat into that, into that one-to-one, -one, you said, this is what I'm going to wanting to do. This is how I think it's going to work. And I just remember saying, go for it. You know, like, what have you got to lose? Mm -hmm. And at the point. Uh, in transparency like with team and leadership we was all a bit worried like is Victor going to make it like is it going to come through I remember chatting to Gilles and saying like the dude's going to do it like watch like it takes time for enterprise accounts and outbound prospecting mm -hmm. but when you see the results and I remember Benjamin the AE like when he was taking your role he was like yeah, yeah. Like, I'm worried for Victor I don't know I said Benji like the dude's got it like he's got the game plan let's just see what happens and when you started bringing those enterprise meetings in, I remember Benjamin slacking me like, oh my God, Victor booked an enterprise. He's got this deal. He's got this one. He's got this meeting. And I was just like, my man, he did it. Yeah. 
And that's kind of like the Steve Rogers of this young, timid guy. You've got the super serum, mm. which was your outbound uh, strategy. You execute. And then you came as like Captain America with his shield, <laughs> like coming through for the Enterprise gang. And I was like, boom. I was so, I, was, I, I, was, I loved it. I was absolutely in love with it. And um, yeah. I was happy to see. But then after that, you was that this guy that was really confident in the office. Like you was on your calls. Like mm-hmm. I think whereas before, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was an element of fear of your peers hearing your calls and your discussions and how you're doing stuff. And then it came into like, I'm Victor Embrex, business developer for Intro, and this element of confidence. What was it that, what was that click moment? What was it that helped you kind of get out of that zone to become that super soldier? Damn. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, stuff to unpack there. Uh, firstly, I want to say the tip of of uh, sitting up straight really uh, has been one of the biggest working points uh, from that point. Um, right now, uh, I do most of my calls actually standing up because it's just another vibe, another feeling, just what I like I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, uh, to the point what clicked, um, I think... Part of it was uh, I saw some people believed in me and this new strategy um, and even a little bit of like trust and encouragement got me um, like a little bit of trust and encouragement got me up even higher up in, in like my energy, in my self-confidence. So um, I think that was a, a part of it. And another part, uh, I've heard this sometimes, I don't know if it's the best advice, but fake it till you make it. Uh, in the beginning, it was a, a bit of fake confidence, but just... Mm. Um, yeah, and that's also what something I noticed uh, going into like sales calls with prospects. In the beginning, I was so afraid, and indeed afraid that anybody would hear how how bad I would uh, talk to these people, how I lost all of these important leads and whatever. And then I just went in um, like uh, confident, and and also I think a big part of it was detaching from the outcome and seeing it as um, this is enterprise, this is account based selling. Not everything has to happen within the first week after each other. It doesn't have to be like disco call, AE meeting, uh, SQO. It can take some time. And it's all about timing and nurturing these accounts for when they are ripe to look into the software, the time the first person they contact. And like that change in mindset of like, it doesn't have to happen on the first disco call, just laying the foundation for a relationship. That helped me um, detach from the outcome because I wasn't in the call anymore to book the next step or whatever. I was in the call to have an enjoyable conversation, lay some foundation, also to qualify if this could potentially be a project in the future. But um, it was way less pressure on the call itself, to be honest. Boom. Spoken like a true, true soldier in in this war of sales. I absolutely love that, my man. And the, and you can hear the passion and energy and like your, your mm. love for it. But I love that. Like I'm not trying to book the next meeting. I'm just having a conversation to lay the foundation. That is a bar and a half. I absolutely <laughs> love that, Victor. And you're right, it's that that sitting up thing. Um, because again, a lot of the time when we're fearful, if you think about it like with creatures, like when they try to go into defense mode, they crunch up, right? And that's what we are being on the call. We're being defensive rather than being open uh, and feeling like confident about it. And this whole thing of fake it till you make it is something one of our guests Maximilian Licht, he brought up in his thing. And to be honest, like when I was writing the post about his episode and fake it to make it, something in me felt a bit off, like typing those words. And what I think to kind of unpack the fake it to your make it is run the the plays or have those conversations as if you're already doing it. You're kind of visualizing what a successful person is like. And you're trying to, uh, you know, not fake it, but you're trying to do like a simulation of that so that you learn and feel how does it feel to have that sort of conversation with people or, you know, doing those sort of deals. Um, And the other piece, like you said, having other people believe in you, like giving somebody just a little bit of encouragement or, you know, it's the saying by Les Brown, sometimes you have to believe in the belief of others in you before it kicks in for yourself. And I think in SDR land and in BDR land, it sells in general, like just giving people like encouraging and like pushing and elevating them can work magic and wonders. And it was like a fountain of knowledge just came out of you. As soon as we uncork yeah. that tap, you're like, boom, like Victor was born and he, he's kind of here. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think, again, it was amazing to see you like go through that transformation. Uh, and I've got big hopes for you like uh, in your future sales career. But I think a question is like, you've taken all those learnings and it wasn't easy at Intuit. And it wasn't easy. And again, what we've just spoken about in like 10 minutes, that went over like a period of six to nine months, like over a year. Yeah. Um, but now you've had this learning in within Intro and you've come into TechWolf and it's a new organization where kind of things are starting from scratch. What key mm-hmm. learnings are you kind of taking into that org and like what are you seeing like with their sales development team and the guys that are kind of joining on board as well? Yeah. Um, I've learned really a lot. Um, also about um, internal stakeholders and, and how you actually collaborate with people. Because when I first joined Intro, I was uh, indeed pretty timid, but I also didn't ask too many questions. I was just there and doing my own stuff. Um, but now uh, one of the biggest thing I've done in like the first week is talk to everybody in the company because that's still possible. We are only with like less than 20 people. So uh, it's definitely possible to have a one-on-one with everybody and um, try to ask some meaningful questions um, about their life, personal, professional, doesn't matter, but forming more of these connections to um yeah, just like your colleagues, actually, um, from the gecko. I think that was one of uh, my big learnings. And then more on the sales development part. I've taken all of those account-based strategies with me um, because uh, uh, at TechWolf, we uh, target even bigger enterprises. So um, those things were really necessary to even scale up a bit. Um, but yeah. And uh, what I've also noticed is that for me, keeping it really theoretical and and learning uh, by reading and and stuff like that, it works, but to an extent, to a limit. So one of the first things I I did when I joined was like, can I get two or three or four key accounts that I can start with right now? Because, uh, and it's not like the highest tier accounts that are like perfect gems in ICP and whatever, but just some accounts to work on some messaging, try some touches with um, to really get me ramped up fast and that I'm having conversations with actual prospects really fast. I think, yeah, that's the the two biggest things I've uh, uh, taken away. Love it, man. And again, I'll be watching intently from the sidelines to see how things are going at TechWolf. It's a super cool company. I've spoken to the founders and I can see some of our family members at Intro have kind of moved across as well, which is always nice. Um, but for for the listeners and the watchers out there, if there's this young Victor Embrex who's just about to embark on a sales development journey, what kind of three actionable tips of advice would you give to that person who's just, uh, you know, either in the sales development role already and they're quite new or they're thinking about going into it, Victor? What would you say to them? Um, If you're thinking about going into it, uh, I would say don't uh, get distracted by um, crazy commission plans or flashy products or really technical uh, details or whatever. I think, especially uh, when going into the SDR or sales role, the most important thing is how much are they going to invest in your coaching? Um, That's, for me, one of the key things I look into uh, every time uh, when I would uh, want to join a company. And I think, especially for the SDR role, um, is really important. Mm, So that's the first thing I would say. Um, And secondly, uh, there's a lot of sales tactics, knowledge uh, being shared and really valuable to read up on those, but it's almost as important or more important to be an industry expert and actually follow what your prospects are following um, and read up on, on, on that and uh, have an arsenal of relevant articles ready to share and, and, and like mention in calls, emails, whatever, um, but really diving into the industry knowledge and it's so so valuable, I think, to know what's going on inside of your prospects' heads. What are like their main goals, main challenges? Um, and it can be really specific or high level, but just having an understanding of that, I think, is really important or even more important than knowing this one tactic that can maybe uh, give you an edge or whatever. Because if people notice that you're actually well read up um, on the subject you're talking about, 
they will uh, want to have a conversation with you. So like coaching is number one, like it's not just about mm. the crazy commission plans and like the numbers <laughs> and saying, hey, they're going to make you this successful person and one day you'll be an AE and the technology, mm. but it's kind of like, what are the business going to do in terms of investing in you, in your personal development, your skill set and helping you grow as an individual? Mm. And I think we saw a lot of that uh, at Intuo um, and I'm happy to say I, I'm privileged to say I was a part of that piece yeah. uh, in your journey as well. Um, mm-hmm. And also, yeah, do you know what? That, that's a really good point. It's not just, again, on LinkedIn as SDRs, we're always seeing great posts of actionable tips of how you book a meeting, how do you handle an objection, mm-hmm. but taking a valid interest in what your prospects are interested in. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, if they're working in the world of HR, what's their key things that they're all trying to work towards? What are the challenges they go through? Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, like you said, when you wanted to pick somebody's brain, or a prospect before you mm-hmm. went into like trying to book a meeting with them saying, I think a great question that you could always ask a, a prospect in your world is how do you keep up to date? What articles or blogs do you read? What would mm-hmm. you recommend? And maybe why, like, why do you access that? And I think that will help build up your knowledge. And then when you get onto another prospect call, when they say, Hey, I, I spoke to this CHRO and they said, they listen to this. What do you listen to? Or what do you watch? Mm-hmm. That can help build rapport as well. But what would you say is the third like key takeaway for you, Victor, to, to deliver to a, a younger version of yourself? Um, the third one uh, maybe ties into the second one a little bit, but um, it's uh, the value of research um, and actually researching a company uh, a person, uh, whatever, before reaching out, I think, uh, yeah, it's one of the the va- most valuable things, and I've I've seen it over the last weeks. I've gotten replies on my first email just because it tailored, and they're telling me uh, it's not f- uh, always positive. They don't always want to book a meeting or whatever, but they are starting a conversation with me because they noticed this guy put in the effort to. Um, go through my LinkedIn, search on Google, whatever. They mentioned an article I was mentioning last week, whatever. Um, that can get you a long way um, in starting a conversation. And that's what you want to do, right? So okay. um, research is uh, uh, key for me. Definitely. And I think what would be interesting to know is in the enterprise space, obviously you're building mm-hmm. accounts, you're doing research. Um, I think a question that I get asked a lot is how much time should you be spending mm. on this research or how much time should you be spending on this personalization? I mm. could sit there for like 15 minutes trying to figure out everything about you and then crafting that really nice email. For mm. some, it may be like five minutes, but how do you, Victor, how do you manage your time in terms of research and how do you do it? Uh, really funny because I, I had a challenge or goal last week to figure this out more and to actually time myself. In the beginning, I set out a goal for like 20 minutes for an account, 10 minutes for a prospect. But I've noticed that I'm not uh, near that, that I'm taking more time actually to research because I really want to find those gems that other people don't find. Um, But I would say on the maximum, maximum side, like because account research you can use over multiple prospects. So in my opinion, you can go a little bit deeper into that if you want to read like the annual report and the one before that uh, and then get some key things out of that. That's totally fine. So I would say um, maybe 45 minutes in total for uh, 30 minutes uh, more on the account and then 15 minutes on the prospect is uh, what I think is a good goal to uh, set out to but, uh, but because indeed uh, i can be in an annual report for five hours but that's not productive anymore that's not efficient anymore and uh, you should really try uh, time yourself uh, uh, try to improve it um, and also uh, don't feel bad to walk away from something like okay i've done my 30 minutes i'm 90% sure there's nothing to find that i can tailor my message to okay then i move on and go on to the next one I love that. I love that. And it kind of makes me feel a bit safe because I do the same thing for like every happy selling conversation I have. Yeah. And I was feeling a bit guilty. Like, am I spending too much time doing this? But I think um, when you're talking about an enterprise level versus like mid-market smaller companies that may not mm-hmm. have annual reports or have public listings out there, but mm-hmm. to really understand a bigger organization, there's so many moving parts. So yeah, you really yeah. have to kind of dive deep into that and that will help you tailor a conversation, an email, etc. So yeah, and I know this might be going back a little bit, but coming back to this mentorship piece, like I was watching an article 
I w- watched a video with Simon Sinek, who was talking about mentorship uh, and mm-hmm. kind of how he got it wrong. But like what he also said is when uh, reaching out to people, they're saying, hey, I want to be a mentor. I need somebody to mentor me, etc." I think what's really beautiful is that what mentorship really means for him was they learn from each other. So from this call, like maybe I've coached you in the past, but you've just taught me something about, mm. hey, maybe doing meetings standing up. That's something I really want to try because every podcast I'm doing at the moment, I'm sitting down and I can feel myself hunched. I know mm-hmm. I could be standing up on this. Another thing that I've learned from you is, hey, the, the 20 minutes on an account, 10 minutes on the prospect, that's something I might actually want to try out as well. So I think the best mentor relationships are where people help each other out. So I think for any listeners out there, if you're approaching somebody and you want to get their advice, think of things of what you could do to help them in their job, you know, help them grow as well. And that's kind of, I think, where you're going to get beautiful um, relationships for as well. Um, But for you, Victor, are there any shout outs that you'd like to give on today's show? Yeah, for sure. But uh, amen to that. Like, I always believe it's like an exchange of knowledge and information and helping each other out. Um, instead of just one way around. Um, any shout outs I want to give? Um, uh, actually to you, Neil, uh, I think this is a really great initiative. Uh, I've listened to almost every episode um, uh, and I really am a big believer in your work. And as you said, like a coach that actually cares about the person, it's uh, really valuable. Um, I've noticed it and I think other people know and feel it too. Um, and other shout outs, Mm-hmm. Thank you, by the way. I'm not going to forget that. Thank you yeah. so much. That means a hell of a lot. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I don't have any shout outs. I was thinking uh, a mentor or coach, but I don't think uh, they do, they want to be in the spotlight necessarily. So, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. No worries. We totally respect that, dude. And um, thank you for listening for all the episodes. And obviously, here's a little bit of a plug. We're always trying to get new people to come onto the show. What was it like for you, this experience? How have you found it? And is uh, what would you recommend to other SDRs that think about being a guest on this show, Victor? Um, uh, the thing is, I really didn't go in blind. Um, I had some examples of people who did it before me. I also had some really valuable um, uh, guidelines that you send over. Um, and yeah, I talked to some people who were on a podcast, uh, a guest and whatever. So I was uh, prepared and that's what I like. I don't like to go in dark, so to say. So I uh, would say uh, prepare a little bit, uh, see what you can uh, find of information. But the experience, yeah. Um, it's actually really cool um, also the way uh, you get to share your story because every podcast episode I've listened, I found those people interesting, I've connected with them, I've, I've, uh, yeah, I've learned a lot from them. So I, um, I love to inspire people and this has been uh, a pretty, really cool experience to do that. Yeah. Well, Victor Embrex, it's been an absolute honor to have you on the show. Um, definitely want to have you back on as a future guest I'm thinking about ideas for future episodes so let's see how things go at TechWolf and hopefully with these enterprise accounts that you're targeting things are going to go good I've got high hopes for you dude Um, and we'll have you back on the guest but Victor I wanted to again thank you so much I want to wish you all the best of luck happy selling and we're going to see your face very soon again okay perfect thank you Neil thank you Victor